Welcome everyone to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program Beta Than Ever. Now in this episode we are going to test a Rockamax mainsail liquid engine landed at the Mun. It's got an enormous completion reward, 125,000 funds, 52 science and 188 reputation. We have an advance of 25,000 funds, so let's get started. This is the uh, monstrosity that I have built in the VAB. You can see the extremely heavy mainsail engine here at the top, balanced precariously on an adapter, and the Probodyne OKTO probe core right in the centre. And if you look very carefully, you can see our Reflectron DP10 and a Communitron 16 as part of our remote tech network we also have our KOS scriptable core and then the relatively straightforward section in here is our lander section the fuel tank and in here we have an LV 909 engine I'm also going to bring to the MUN a couple of mystery goo containment vessels so we have a bit of science to collect along with a thermometer here crammed in between the photovoltaic panels. Now the launch stage itself, let's take a bit of a step back, uh, is a pretty standard asparagus stage section. We have the main central core in here with the skipper liquid engines on the bottom and then two asparagus outer tanks here. You can see the, uh, the pipes here. So that's going to be our launch section. So the actual launch itself should be relatively straightforward. We will use a KOS script to do that that we've seen once before. So let's get ourselves on the way to the MUN. For this trip to the MUN we're going to need three scripts. So let's get our console open. And we're going to copy from the archive a script called send which we've already seen once before, and we're going to copy it to the onboard memory. We're going to copy a script called hard stop. I bet you can't, uh, can't guess what that does. And, of course, we're going to copy a landing script. We need a landing script, landing script version 3, and copy that to memory as well. So let's just clear this out of the way. There we go. And we can now set up for launch, so let's get the maximum thrust. We won't set the SAS because we're going to use the Ascend script to do that. So let's run the Ascend script that will set our pitch. Oop, can't spell. And let's launch away. Now you'll notice quite a bit of vibration has uh, picked up. You can see that with the pitch your and roll controls down here. And that's because the uh, gimbling on these engines is way too powerful for our needs. So let's just lock down the gimbal. And just let our uh, control wheels in here do their stuff. And you can see much, much smoother now. There's the MUN. That's where we're going. Take our big lump of junk to the MUN. Leave it there for posterity. First thing we have to look out for is our first stage. We're going to be monitoring and managing throttle and staging ourselves. We'll just let the Ascend script manage our pitch. You can see we are around about terminal velocity without having to manage our throttle at all. So uh, we'll just leave it at that. A little bit too high, but uh, not a problem. Just about time for our separation. There we go. Here we are. Almost took out our central engine, but, <laughs> but just, just managed to avoid that. Now we did uh, just about hold velocity. There we go, we're starting to go up again. Now if you recall, this Ascend script will uh, keep our pitch slowly turning over until it reaches 32 
thousand kilometers at which point it should be about 30 degrees and at that point it will trigger the lights which I have bound all my extendable objects to which is the panels the communitron and hidden around here is actually a dish we didn't speak about this in the VAB earlier but this is going to be used to maintain communication back to Kerbin during transit uh, because the communitrons don't have the necessary range but we'll come back to that so we are almost at our uh, final degree, uh, 30 degree angle. There we go, you can see all the panels extending. There we are, and we are now cruising to Apoapsis. Now while we wait, let's set the target back to Kerbin for that panel. So this will now be facing back towards Kerbin and any satellite with a dish in range near Kerbin should allow us to communicate back to the Kerbal Space Centre. So it's just now a matter of waiting until we reach our apoapsis and at which point our script will cut out and we will switch over to using the onboard computer, the flight computer, to do the next set of manoeuvres. So we're 75, so we're well into, uh, well into space with Apoapsis now. And there we go, 90. Program ended, so we'll close that for the moment. Go out to Map View, let's centre on Kerbin, and set up our circularisation. There we go, 21. There we go. 9184, let's just adjust this a little bit. There we go. And we're in space, so let's get our node lined up and have it executed in one minute. So we can just see flight computer lining us up on our node. which point we are free to accelerate. Now I don't think we're going to have quite enough fuel so we will have to stage again. Let's get ready for that. This transfer stage should give us plenty of fuel with our uh, there's a little, uh, little engine in there, should be plenty of fuel to get us to the MUN and get us into orbit. So. We've got a uh, skipper engine in there. Yep, there we go. Poodle. <laughs> Poodle. <laughs> well, that should be fine. So uh, that's got plenty of thrust for us to move this rather uh, big lump around the Kerbin system. Let's see our periapsis appearing shortly. A bit lopsided because we have uh, less thrust in the stage, but uh, no big deal. Not going to be here very long. Now, 65, so we're going to have to uh, thrust just a little bit. So let's go uh, prograde. There we go. And just add a little bit to our periapsis. There we go, that should be fine. Right, next, MUN. Where's the MUN? There we go. We have one satellite around the MUN. And that's going to provide us with some coverage for our lander. But we will worry about that when the time comes. So let's get our... We don't want to be targeted on our previous experimental craft, our ion test craft. Let's just grow this... Periapsis, <laughs> periapsis, apoapsis. Let's see how we doing. There we go. Thirty-six. That's actually not so bad. Oops, <laughs> that's gone into the planet. There we go. Ten. There we go. Probably won't be that by the time we get there. But let's get the manoeuvre locked in. So uh, turn to the manoeuvre node, which you can see down here. There we go to execute it in 23 minutes. So 
So we're all lined up. We're in the sun at this point. We are going to go around the back of Kerbin. So let's keep an eye on our electric charge as we go round. Now the only batteries have got are these uh, four large batteries here, but that should be enough. So we go into uh, shadow. Charge starts running down. We are drifting away from our manoeuvre node, so we'll have to correct that before we arrive at burn time. And there we go. Just come out of time warp, allow the uh, flight computer to bring us back on target. And then just walk forward to our node. There we go. And here we are burning for the month. So let's keep an eye on how we're doing. Should be able to see the uh, ion craft at some point. Oh, there it is. That was the one where we tested the uh, the ion engine in our previous episode. We're about uh, two thirds of the way through the burn. 19 seconds left. Let's see how the uh, last little bit of delta V makes the most difference. And there we go. So. Didn't do, uh, didn't do too great, but we're close enough. So what we'll do now is we'll use the uh, Marvel of Kerbal Alarm Clock to warp to our change of SOI, which is over here, and then we will make the necessary corrections to get ourselves a little closer in. Just tap it again to. Uh, raise up our uh, warp speed. You can see us coming in on the MUN. So let's focus that as centre in our view. Now it drops us out of warp a little bit before change, which is fine. So let's just, uh, oh, it's just <laughs> just crossed. Just as I was about to make a uh, an alteration to uh, time warp, it's just crossed. Okay, fine. So let's put another node in here and bring ourselves into our final orbital height. So let's bring it down. I want to bring it down to, I don't know, 15, something like that. So what are we, 155, 114 bring it in quite close we don't want to have much work to do in order to land 57 31 13 maybe that's a little bit much 16 that'll do that'll do just nicely so let's target the node again to execute and then use time warp to bring us in. There we go, now we don't have to worry, the flight computer will take care of time warp for us as we approach, there we go. I'm going to try and land on the bright side, because we don't have any lights, <laughs> uh, so uh, that would help. But we do have to worry about our communication back to Kerbin, so we will have to plan the descent. 
Right, so there we go. That's brought us nicely in. Let's remove that node. And then let's just circularize. There we go, it's getting close. There we are. 16, 15, that's fine. We'll go for node again. Queue up the execute. But before we accelerate time, we'll let it get on target. Go up to maximum warp, bring us round. We are uh, out of comms, but the flight computer has everything queued up. So that should be good. Now we can't give, uh, oh, it's just popped back into. I was about to say, we can't give any fresh instructions, but it <laughs> uh, just popped back into, uh, into communication. Well, that is fine. That is absolutely fine. Well, I reckon our next port of call is to drop our satellite somewhere down here. So as soon as we get around, we'll do just that. Oh, well, I brought our test vehicle round to the bright side of the MUN. We can see our communication back to mission control from our dish on the back of the transfer stage. So when we uh, eject that stage, we will lose that communication and then we'll have to rely on the MUN 1 to do our relay. But hopefully that will be overhead as we land so that should be uh, relatively straightforward and shouldn't present any problems so let's just nip back out of map view and prepare now the first thing we need to do is make sure that the fight computer has no instructions because like SAS we can't overcome the flight computer equally we need to make sure the gear is in the stowed position which it is on the craft, but not necessarily on the button. So let's just set that. And now let's run our first instruction, which is hard stop. Now this is a piece of code that I borrowed from the wiki. I'll put a description, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, all it does is align to retrograde and then fire the throttle until our horizontal speed is negligible. So it's basically going to choose us a landing spot hopefully down here somewhere that is relatively flat we shall see <laughs> a little bit random I guess but um, got to land somewhere there's our uh, transfer stage gone and there goes our medium range transmitter let's just have a quick look yeah we can see we now have a link back via the MUN 1 there we go the MUN mark 1 so let's see how we are doing here. So our horizontal speed is coming down, 140 meters per second. So it looks like we'll be landing here. Hopefully this dark patch here isn't too much of a slope. And we land, say, here where it's nice and level. That would help a lot. So we're down to 70 meters per second. Retrograde is beginning to uh, come back towards top of the sky, top of the uh, nav ball there. So yeah, it looks like we'll be landing somewhere here. Again, hopefully that's nice and flat. And there we go. Tiny horizontal speed, so we are now coming more or less straight down. So let's just, uh, just have a look at that. Now, next thing we need to do is run our landing script. Now, as part of our landing script, we are still in control of our steering, so we can control our retrograde marker and keep that as vertical as possible. But we will let the script determine our vertical velocity. Now, it's a very, very simple P controller, which you can find out all about on the documentation website. 
It takes a desired velocity, which is just 2% of our radar altitude above the terrain, and finds the difference to the actual velocity, which it just measures from the ship, which gives us an error, that is the delta velocity between the two, and from that it can calculate the throttle setting, which is simply a gain, which I have uh, randomly chosen through trial and error to be 0.1 times the difference. So you can just see that that is 0.1 of the difference in velocity. So when that gets to the range between 0 and 1, engines will fire. So uh, let's see how we do. So there we go. Engine is firing. It's currently on two-thirds throttle. Now the gain value um, is... Uh, not exactly science, <laughs> not for me anyway, um, is how vigorously you want the throttle to respond to a difference between the desired and actual velocities in this case. So uh, point one is uh, relatively vigorous, but it's doing the job. It's keeping us at a reasonable pace. The difference between our desired and actual velocities is about five meters per second. And our surface velocity Falling is just now below 46 meters per second. All we need to do is just keep ourselves falling vertically. So let's just bring that retrograde node back. There we go. We now don't have to worry about managing our velocity. There we go. So keep that down as low as possible. Horizontal speed about 5 millimeters a second so we're about uh, a thousand meters above the terrain and we're going at 22 meters a second nice and gentle now again how you calculate the desired velocity is up to you based on the amount of thrust you have amount of gravity you have to fight against and a lot of trial and error <laughs> So there we go, still going vertically down. Looks relatively flat. Looks like we might have a bit of a slope going in this direction. So let's just rotate a little bit. So we have a leg facing down the slope, maybe going that way, maybe. Let's see if we can keep ourselves vertical. Eight meters per second, that should be fine. Legs will extend automatically, there we go, at 250 metres. I've got that in the script as well. Six metres per second. And the good thing is the script is just looking at your difference in velocity. So if you do turn the craft and the velocity increases, the throttle will increase to compensate. So it is a very natty mechanism. Now, it's relatively flat. I think we should be all right. I'm beginning to drift a little. So let's come back. Going so slowly, even the slightest movement is changing our vertical velocity and our drift. Here we go. Cross fingers. And we're down. <laughs> let's take off the SAS, just let the craft settle. And we made it. Brilliant. <laughs> oh dear, I didn't think we were going to do that then. I thought we were going to drift off and fall. But we made it. So let's get the uh, SAS back on and uh, close that window. So we are now ready to start testing. Now, I'm, <laughs> I am so, so worried we're going to throw ourselves over. I'm going to set the thrust limiter to zero. Uh, we have the throttle at zero. Let's get our... Uh, contract up we are on the mun we are landed and we simply have to activate the part through staging but we could also run the test so let's run the test and we're done brilliant so let's have a look at our contract it's uh, let's close that let's have a look at our contract message window so for completion we got 125,000 funds 52 science and a whole a lot of reputation so I think we did pretty well there so that's the uh, the mission concluded I think our next task 
is to uh, review our not-so-elegant landing scripts. And for that, I'll see you in a moment. We used two scripts as part of our descent onto the MUN. This is the first one, it's called hardstop.ks. And we initialise a few things at the beginning. We switch off the SAS so that uh, KOS can control the ship. Remember we had to manually switch off the flight computer as well. We set the main pilot throttle to zero, so if the, uh, the pilot, the user, has set a throttle, it will be zero now and when the script exits. Next part is where we align to the surface retrograde vector. So we lock the cooked throttle to zero, so there are no engine running. We lock the my steer variable to ship retrograde. We'll see how we use that in a minute. And then we lock the steering to my steer. So at this point, the ship will start turning to face ship surface retrograde. Now, as the comment mentions, I stole the next bit from the old wiki. You can see the link there if you want to see the full example. Basically, on line 20, we lock the variable align to some ugly trig, as the uh, original author mentions. And this is to determine whether we are aligned to our vector, knowing that 1 degree and 359 degrees are really only 2 degrees apart. So thanks for that little bit of maths. That saved me a lot of effort. Now, we wait here until the alignment is less than 0.01 and we print out some telemetry on the screen to show us what our facing pitch and yaw is, the steering pitch and yaw is, and finally our alignment value. As I said, when we reach alignment of less than 0.1, we exit and clear the screen. We then come to a hard horizontal stop by slamming on the throttle, waiting until the ship's surface speed is less than 0.1 meter per second, and then cutting the throttle. So this section here is the hard stop. Finally, we prepare to land by locking the steering to up, which puts us in the vertical direction, and we wait a couple of seconds for that to happen. We switch on the SAS so that we are locked in the vertical direction. And finally, we unlock the steering before exiting the script. Next up, we have land3.ks. This is the actual throttle control for our landing. We initialize again by making sure the SAS is on, but it would have been from the previous script. And then we configure what is known as a P controller, part of a more sophisticated PID controller system. This is designed to control your throttle so that you don't have to as a pilot. The way this works is very, very straightforward. We set what we would uh, call our actual velocity variable, AV, and that is specified as the ship's vertical speed. We set up a lock on a variable called dv, which is our desired velocity, and all we're going to do is say that our desired velocity is our altitude multiplied by 0.02. In other words, 2% of our radar altitude is the desired vertical speed, and we use minus to ensure that that's a downward vertical speed. Now our throttle, or p value, is set to, again, multiplied by the difference between our desired and actual velocity. Now the gain value is how aggressive you want your throttle to be, and by trial and error I found that a value of 0.1 for my ship on the MUN was just about right. Finally, we lock the throttle to that value p, and just use the min and max functions to ensure that the throttle value as set by the PID controller, or the P controller in this case, never goes outside the range of 0 to 1. Next we set up a little WHEN trigger. When the altitude is less than 250 metres from the terrain, we're going to switch the gear on. Now remember, when you launch, the gear is set on, although the gear is actually closed. So make sure you untrigger the gear by pressing the button on the toolbar in order to get the gear armed and ready so that when we get to 250 meters off the terrain the gear will come on correctly. The next section is simply a wait until we arrive at the surface. Now we could just do that very simply by waiting until the altitude of the radar was less than one meter but because people like to see something on the screen 
we're just going to print out some telemetry whilst we wait for uh, our arrival on the surface. Meanwhile, we will be controlling our uh, horizontal velocity, just moving left, right, up and down to keep our retrograde vector right beneath us. Finally, when we reach that magical one meter off the surface, we're going to unlock the throttle, make sure that the pilot's main throttle is zero so that when we exit the script, there'll be no uh, unfortunate happenings as we bounce back up into space. Back on the Mun, we've still got a few things that we can do. We've got a couple of goo canisters, so let's just observe the mystery goo. And we could have had uh, 36 science, but we're going to transmit it for 10.8, so let's transmit that science and obviously ruin the goo container in the process. So there's 100% of that, and if we squeeze in here we have a temperature gauge and we would have got 28.8 .8, but we're going to transmit it for 50% of that science. So that's added another well, 24, 25 units of science. Now of course if we hadn't got a link back to Kerbin we wouldn't have been able to transmit it but with the MUN Mark 1 overhead we were fine. So with that said I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.